everybody, it's Star of the Year, and welcome back to the channel. I'm super happy and excited to review a book that is not Star Wars this time, but it is in fact Fire and Blood, written by none other than George R. R. Martin with illustrations by Doug Wheatley. This is part of A Song of Ice and Fire. It's not in the actual series of like the next book in the series, but it is in fact a written history about the Targaryen lineage. So we go all the way back 300 years before the events of Game of Thrones, and this is all about Aegon the Conqueror's family. Yes, that's right, the Targaryens, they fled from Valyria after its doom, and they settle on Dragonstone, and then we learn about Aegon the Conqueror, and how he has his two sisters help him conquer Westeros, thus creating this entire seven kingdoms of Westeros, and he creates the Iron Throne, and then it just talks about all of his descendants, and about all the wars that happen. One of my favorite wars in this whole book is a dance of dragons and that is when there's two different um hairs potential heirs to the throne and there's a big infight against these targaryens what's really cool about this book is this shows us all these big battles when dragons were super numerous because remember it was a miracle when daenerys gets three little draglings and or dra i guess that's what you call them little baby dragons i just made up a new word apparently but no, you go back 300 years ago and dragons were everywhere. Basically every Targaryen, and there were many Targaryens, basically had an adopted dragon and grew up with the dragon. So there's lots of battles where people are on top of the dragons and they're, they're flying them around and they're just fires going everywhere. But it's not just about the dragons. It's very much a Game of Thrones book. I mean, come on, it's, it's written by George R. R. Martin. So you know there's going to be a lot of political machinations, a lot of backstabbings, a, a lot of tragedies. And the way that George R. R. Martin writes some of the punishments that go into these, these terrible things that happen with these characters is just gut-wrenching. And there's lots of red wedding type moments in this book. But again, it's not the way the story is written. This is not really a story. That's the crazy part, right? It's, it's a written history. Like if you were to pick up a, a history book, it's kind of written in the same sort of way. Where we're not getting like a, a main character, right? We're going to get like several hundred characters actually in this 700 page uh, book here. But the cool thing is the way the story is told throughout different parts and segments of the story, there's actually different sources and they reference, okay, the Septon uh, at the time said this, but then you had the, the fool of the court who said this. So it's like, who do you believe? You kind of have to take it for yourself and interpret things the way that they re represent to you. And to help do that, again, they have these awesome illustrations. They're all drawn up by Doug Wheatley. There are about 80 of them, and they really showcase what's going on at certain parts of the book and just add that other little bit of a visual element to help you understand what is exactly uh, going on. And that really does help especially with with this whole uh, world of Westeros we're not just dealing with Westeros we hear about about the the place of Lys and about uh, Bravos and Dorne all these places that we know from from Game of Thrones and they're not all like elaborated on very much which I also appreciate they're like okay there's these other battles going on across the narrow city but we're more focused on what's happening in Westeros and the Targaryens and it's all about fire and blood and with that I will say there are some things in here that kind of held it back from being a perfect book right like there's certain segments that are a little bit dull and again this is not your normal type of story where you're going to be so invested at least I was wasn't so invested in these stories that I had to keep reading. In fact, this book took me several months to get through. It was um, something that I had on the back burner, but I, I really wanted to finish it because I feel like it enriches my understanding of everything, the backdrop of Game of Thrones. It really does enhance everything for me, knowing about the Targaryens and about this rich history of what happened in Westeros, starting with Aegon the Conqueror 300 years prior to Game of Thrones. So with that being said, I'm going to give Fire and Blood a score of a 9 out of 10. I do recommend this for most people. I know that this is not going to be the type of uh, a book that many people that read the Game of Thrones are going to expect. They might pick this up and say, oh, this is the next chapter after Dance of Dragons, the fifth book in A Song of Ice and Fire. No, this is more or less a source book that helps enrich what happened before that. And the funny thing is, this is only volume one. There is another volume that is going to contain the rest of the history leading up to Robert's Rebellion. So who knows when that's going to come out because I'm still waiting for Dance of Dragons and A Dream of Spring and to have that close out Game of Thrones. So that is going to do it for me 
with the book review of Fire and Blood. Did you guys check this one out? Let me know in the comment section down below. For more on Game of Thrones, I might not have that much content on the channel. You can check out my previous uh, reviews, but whenever the books do come out, the future ones, I will be talking about those. But I do talk a lot about Star Wars and other pop culture things with different reviews and whatnot. If you guys are new to the channel and you like this review and like what I had to say about this certain book, you can go ahead and support the channel simply by subscribing. Also, for those that haven't seen, I did put up my 2020 channel update. It includes a Q&A that is coming out later this week on Friday, so you can go ahead and send me your questions for that. I also have other updates about different things happening with the channel, so make sure you go ahead and check that out. So that is going to do it for me, Star. Thank you so much for watching, and bye-bye. Thanks for checking out the video. Please hit that thumbs up symbol. It helps me know that I'm making content that you guys enjoy. And if you enjoyed this video, I also include two videos down below you guys should check out. And please consider subscribing to this channel. It helps support me and it notifies you guys of when I get new videos up on the channel. You can also contact me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at StarRaptor.